this is a little nestling. This age, you can see it doesn't have a lot of feathers. It actually kind of looks like it's got some drier fuzz on its head. And you can see it's still pink. This is called a nestling because it should still be in the nest. So if you ever find a little bird that doesn't have full feathers yet, you can see that it can't fly. In fact, if you look right here in its neck, all that white stuff is actually food. This is the bird's crop, so you can see it's just been fed, but this size bird needs to be in the nest. So if you find one this size and it hasn't been hurt by a dog or a cat, the first thing you want to do is try to find the nest and put it back in the nest. If it's hurt or you can't find the nest, that's when you should reach out to an adult for some help because these little ones won't make it on their own at this size. This is a fledgling. You can see it still has some of that little dryer fuzz looking stuff on its head and sometimes all over its body, but for the most part, it's got a lot more feathers. It's a different bird, so this one is bigger, but you can tell that because of the feathers, it can kind of keep itself warm. At this size, you might find them out of the nest. However, that's because they're learning how to fly and as long as they're not injured, and you can keep your cats and dogs away from them, their parents are usually around teaching them how to fly. So if you find one this size outside the nest, it's not necessarily important that you put it right back in the nest, but it's important that you leave it alone so that its parents can teach it how to fly and how to be a wild bird. This is a box turtle. Box turtles, as soon as they hatch, are about the size of a quarter, and at that time, they are on their own. So even if you find a tiny box turtle, they can be left in the wild. You don't want to ever bring them home. And if you ever see one crossing the road, you always want to move it in the direction that it is already going. Don't turn it around because box turtles know where they want to go. So if you take it on the opposite side that it's going, it's just going to turn around and come back. An interesting fact about box turtles, you can actually tell if they're males or females by the colors of their eyes. Females have brown eyes, like this one, and males actually will have orange or red eyes. So make sure you leave turtles in the wild. This is an eastern cottontail rabbit. It is pretty little. It's about a week old when they're first born. They don't have any fur, but by the time they're four weeks old, they're the size of my palm or a softball. And at that time, they're ready to leave their nest and be on their own. Now, if you find a nest and you don't find a mom around, that's a normal and a good thing because their moms only feed them twice a day and don't stay at the nest to keep predators away. Just like rabbits, fawns or baby deer are left alone during the day to protect them from predators. Their spots make them camouflage and they have no scent. So they are safe from predators if their mom isn't around. She will leave them during the day and often people will find a deer and think that it needs help when really the mom's just left it there. So if you find a fawn and it's curled up and it's quiet and it has no smell, then it is okay. Leave it for its mom to come back for it. This is a very young Virginia possum. Possums are really awesome animals to have around. A lot of people are afraid of them because as you can see this one is trying to hiss and look really really scary but in real life they only have two defenses. To protect themselves from predators. The first would be to hiss and make themselves look all scary and the second is to play dead. So that's why a lot of times you'll see possums that are hit by cars because if a car is coming near them they will play dead which doesn't protect them. Now we see a lot of little possums because if a possum is hit by a car and it's a female 
Female possums are called marsupials, which means just like kangaroos, they have pouches on their bellies for their babies, which are called joeys. So if a female is hit by a car and she's got a pouch full of joeys, often we can save them. So some other cool, interesting things about possums are, as you can see on this one's foot, they actually have toes on their back feet, which help them with climbing and grasping things. They also have an interesting little tail. It's not doing much right now, but their tails are actually prehensile, which means they can hold onto things like another hand. Now, if you take a second and look at your thumbnail, so if you look at my thumbnail next to this possum, you can see this possum's a lot bigger than my thumbnail, but when possums are born, they're the size, if not smaller, than your thumbnail. And they'll crawl to their mom's pouch, and they stay there till they're about five inches or so from the tip of their nose to the base of their tail. And when they're that big, they will crawl out of her pouch and they stay on her back. Now, a lot of times, they will fall off of her back, which is a good thing if they're big enough to be on their own. But if a possum is smaller than eight inches, which is about the size of a dollar bill, so if it's smaller than a dollar bill from its nose to where its tail starts, then it's too little to be on its own and it needs help. However, if it is bigger than that, they do not need help. It's best just to keep your dogs and cats away because they're amazing animals. They eat lots of ticks and they can eat venomous snakes. So they keep your backyard really clean. No matter where you are, or what you're doing, you might encounter some wildlife. It could be in your backyard, it could be when you're at school, or it could be just when you're playing on a playground. So before you ever, ever help any wildlife, you always wanna ask yourself these main questions. The first one is, is that animal in immediate danger? That means, is a cat gonna get it? Is a car gonna hit it? Those are some questions you wanna ask yourself about immediate danger. The second is, is it safe to help? If a car is about to hit an animal, you don't want to run in front of that car to save the animal because then you could get injured. So always make sure it is safe to help and always get an adult to help you. The third is, is it injured? If wild animals get injured, they need help just like if your dog or cat gets injured and they have to go to the vet. Some things you can look for are fly eggs, which look like little tiny grains of rice, or a lot of times if an animal has ants on it, that's not a good sign either. The fourth is, is it approachable? Wildlife doesn't want to be touched by humans, so if you're able to easily approach it, that is not a good thing. And the last question is, is its mom around? Now this changes from animal to animal, but we always want to let wild animals stay with their mom when we can. So before you help any wildlife, these are the main questions you want to ask yourself.